Hello from a quite chilly New Haven <laughs> here in the Edinburgh area and uh, our usual Monday live award winning Joe and Mike's Virtual Tours of Scotland and we've got a very special tour today and we're going to do it in two parts so doing uh, New Haven and we're on the main street of New Haven but thank you very much everybody for, for watching and coming on today and once again, remember about our YouTube channel. Uh, if you haven't already done so, uh, our subscribers are building up. And if you've missed a, a tour in the past, you can always go back on there and uh, watch it and catch up with it. And we've got Joe today, who's behind the camera. Yeah, yeah, we've been having some storms, a couple of storms. The last one that came in was called Storm Corey. Uh, which came in on Sunday yesterday and I think it's probably the tail end of that we've still got a few cold winds allied to that as well so um, here we are on the main street of New Haven now New Haven is a smallish place today it's on the coast and it's part of Edinburgh that's about uh, 5,000 uh, people who stay here today and it's gone through many stages in its history and we are in front of this building here with this beautiful sculpture plaque here above the doorway of the Society of uh, Free Fishermen of New Haven and there would be various uh, groupings of people because it was very much a uh, community and people would support each other in the community and uh, this uh, Society of Free Fishermen they had a lot to do with the founding of the school uh, which we'll cover at the end of the tour today, which is the Victoria School, uh, which is further away at the other end of New Haven, and uh, it goes back to 1844, and it's the oldest uh, school uh, since that time uh, still in existence. It has recently had to move its people out because they're expecting a big uh, increase in the school population into a more modern school, but the building is still there today and has uh, been a school just up until the other year there. Uh, so that is a connection here with the Society of Free Fishermen. And into the distance you can see the port of Granton and Granton developed later on in the 19th century and uh, still quite an active place today. And in between Granton and where I'm standing here at uh, this point, uh, the, the, the westerly point of New Haven, uh, was the Chain Pier and there is a pub today called the Chain Pier and it is all that is left of uh, an amazing pier that was put there in the 19th century, the early 19th century. It was uh, built in the 1820s and it had a lot to do with a proposed visit by George IV to Edinburgh. Um, it was uh, in 1822 that uh, he came and it was all expected to be him arriving at this pier and to uh, have his main access into Edinburgh going off this road here which was uh, built for him for his processional route called Craig Hall Road and you can see the number seven bus just going up there at the moment and this is an internal wall for people who wish to climb and uh, it has been a conversion from a church which dates back to the 1840s and it was called St Andrew's Free Church and Joe and I have actually spoken about what the Free Church was it was a breakaway grouping of people from the Church of Scotland which was Presbyterian and people who didn't agree with their patronage in appointing preachers or ministers in terms of uh, landowners and nobility and they, they believed that the Bible was the main focus and that uh, they believed in a more um, kind of, uh, oh, what's the word, uh, even uh, appointment of ministers where they would uh, have a vote in terms of appointment or the church elders as such who were uh, the congregation. So there was this breakaway group called the Free Church but then uh, later on it unified and in the 1920s it came back into the fold of the Church of Scotland and many of these churches became obsolete and uh, they were repurposed and so we've got St Andrew's uh, Church here repurposed into this climbing wall uh, attraction. My son is a great climber and he comes here and climbs this wall. We've got a video of him going up here and uh, 
as he was climbing up almost to the top, a bird landed on his head. And, uh, or alien rock, as it's called. And you can see that today, and it's facing over to the, the 5th of 4th. Quite an elegant, uh, elegant, elegant building it is as well. It was called the, the Great Michael, and it was just a huge, one of the biggest ships. In fact, some of the normal-sized ships, you could fit many of them into the hull of this enormous, great, massive ship. You could fit the three of the ships that Christopher Columbus used. Yes. The Santa Maria, the Pinta, and the Nina. Yeah. Uh, all three of them could fit into that one ship. Quite easily. And it was for the Royal, the Scottish Royal Navy, and uh, we're, we're talking about, we're going back to about 1504, 1505, when they started building this. And the reason it was built at New Haven was because the harbour here was so deep. Leith uh, was a very tidal harbour, and it wasn't as uh, suitable for such a massive thing. And it was said that uh, he ordered so many trees to be cut down to build this enormous ship that all of the forestation in the Kingdom of Fife, which is across the Firth of Forth, the river opposite New Haven, were cut down so that he could get all the oak trees available to build this massive great ship. In century, this chapel uh, was built and it was uh, founded by uh, James IV also and we've got remnants here of the chapel uh, because we're thinking of religious times and the power of the king was very much uh, connected with religion. I believe that uh, kingship came from God and uh, so we had this uh, chapel, 16th century chapel and uh, there is some of it remaining today and it's a kind of hidden corner which is very easy uh, to miss so we can uh, appreciate the external one of the external walls of the, the chapel here. Inside now you can see there is a grave, or was a graveyard in here uh, for burials as well, for interments. So this is, this is how we're in here, this is still prepared burials of people who worked while they were building the ship as well. That's right, so we're, we're talking about, it's been used as a building since 1505. And that, that was the time that the, all of this project was uh, taking shape. And this uh, chapel, uh, it's called the Chapel of St. Mary and St. James. And if uh, Joe can focus in a little bit, maybe you can see on here, without losing the sound, you can see where the chapel was positioned, very close to the water because uh, there is a lot of land reclamation here where the main street now appears quite far away, further away from the water, but back then it was quite close and you can see where the chapel was positioned and here is the sea and the beach and everything very close to it and what it would have originally looked like here. Certainly is, and uh, here is another example here of a painting of the building of the Great Michael, just to give you an idea of what a huge uh, undertaking and such a huge project that was, and it certainly did stimulate the community and add to the, the development of New Haven way back in the 16th century, and a lot to do it with its ongoing existence. But um, in this little burial ground, there is a very significant. Uh, fountain uh, called the Fishwives Fountain and this was uh, donated. Uh, of course we've got patronage all the time, we've got wealthy people who were ship owners, boat owners and other things who would uh, gift certain items and this was uh, gifted uh, for the fishwives uh, and for the public 
uh, to drink at, a drinking fountain. And there was originally a little domed structure on top of this to stop the seagulls uh, polluting the water fountain. And it was lost for many years. And uh, looking at it today, we can see there's a date of 1910, if you look very, very carefully at it. But it uh, was forgotten about. It was stored away and forgotten about. So nice to have it back here today in this uh, little um, open space here. Yeah, you're just walking in the footsteps of uh, many significant historical figures who have been here. Now, in the 1950s and 1960s, there was issues with uh, overcrowding and poverty, and uh, they made a move to shift the inhabitants out of here and break up the communities that were there and uh, shifted them into various uh, housing estates that were being built around that time and they demolished uh, most of old New Haven, unfortunately. So what we've got here, I mean they didn't demolish the chapel and we've just passed that just now and I think there's one other house for the long that's still in existence but everywhere else was taken down and then they rebuilt or rather built in the fashion or style of what these uh, original houses uh, going back would have been like. So say like 17th century houses, uh, we talk a lot about Gladstone's land in uh, Edinburgh and the Lawn Market and its external staircase and things like that and these houses would have been very similar to that and you can see if you look down this little um, access it's on a slope and you can see poles in the centre and that would be for hanging out the laundry and the washing there. The living accommodation would be up the stairs but down below there would be like the fishing nets and articles to do with the landing of the fish, the catching of the fish and so on because uh, originally it would have been people involved in the the fishing industry that were here. So you've got a kind of storage area down below and the living area up above there. The Harbour Inn uh, is a great little pub. It's uh, a music venue. People can turn up here with their instruments and play music in here uh, in traditional music sessions. But also there's a good uh, collection of maps in here also. And even if you walk in the door on the left-hand side, there's uh, some examples of music scores on the wall too. Um, the Harbour Inn, this uh, brings to mind the traditional name that uh, the inhabitants of New Haven had and they were uh, called Botos. Botos. Now, uh, a very unusual B-O-W? To T O W or Bowtow, yeah, uh, but we think that connection is linking the sea with the land. So we've got the bows of the the boat and the toe of the land to connecting with the landscape. Or even the name Bateau maybe sums it up as well because we've got. Uh, that connection too, but uh, it could have been another reason Boto could be to do with the boats themselves being linked together so that in harbour they, in strong winds, that they wouldn't uh, move away too much from their moorings and they would be connected together too. So uh, yeah, Boto's and that name is uh, fondly remembered today as the name of the inhabitants of New Haven. So we've got uh, old New Haven that we're in at the moment, but uh, New Haven has been extended as the years go on uh, to be new New Haven, uh, but we, we won't talk too much about that just now. We're going to walk along a little bit more, I think, along the front. The Peacock Inn. Now, it's uh, gone under many different occupiers, and originally it was uh, an inn that went back to the 18th century and it uh, happened to be named after a gentleman whose uh, surname was Peacock, I think it was James, James Peacock. What was Great Michael used for? Uh, it was a warship. Yeah, it was a warship. It was like a flagship as well. It was a symbol of the power of the King of the Scottish Navy. And uh, 
it, it was uh, a very much a prestige symbol as well. Uh, so the bigger the ship, the more powerful the king. And uh, he was in bad terms eventually with England, was James IV. And when he suffered James IV at the Battle of Flodden in 1513, and he was killed, and a lot of the Scottish nobility lost their lives as well, uh, he was fighting against uh, England at the time, uh, Henry VIII, in fact, and uh, he suffered a huge defeat then. The great Michael it was uh, sold or passed on to the French, who were great allies of Scotland, but then eventually it... Uh, it became out of use. It was seen as being a bit of a burden to them at some point as well. Okay. Lands of mice and men. Yes. <laughs> so have another look at the peacock in here. So going back to about the 18th century, uh, what the fishwives would be uh, transporting and what people would be getting from here quite a lot. Uh, famously were the oysters, and this would have been uh, uh, an inn where oysters were served for some of the wealthy inhabitants of the town too, of which there were many, and the further more you go up the hill and the further you go towards uh, the east side, then you would get more people who were maybe boat owners, pilots who would be people who would uh, know the harbour area, uh, know the hazards of the harbour, and who would guide the fishing boats safely out to sea well they would uh, accumulate a lot more wealth and they would be positioning themselves further up the hill but uh, on this side of town now this, uh, this gentleman here is a pilot P-I-L-O-T pilot and he is uh, holding what looks like a, a top hat and uh, his garb looks uh, quite refined in a way and I think the pose looks like somebody who uh, quite aware of their importance and this one again is an early photograph uh, taken by uh, Hill and Adamson which we're talking about earlier going back to the 1840s the pioneers of photography. yeah absolutely uh, historic photograph here as well but there are stories of people being in the Peacock Inn before land reclamation because this whole area is what we call a raised beach higher up uh, into where the main street is but before that time and you go back to the 16th century this would all be water this would all be the sea here because this has been increasingly reclaimed for the building of houses and the expansion of New Haven so much so that today it uh, connects in, with Leith very much looking uh, over to that side there as well but um, this is the Victoria School and you can see the dates there around about the 1840s and we have got a copy rather, of a plaque which is uh, further along the main street but uh, here we have um, a significant artifact uh, going back to the 16th century in New Haven's history uh, called the Armada Stone. Now this Armada Stone uh, commemorates the Spanish Armada and we're going back uh, to the 1580s when uh, Queen Elizabeth I of England was at war with Philip of Spain and uh, there was the encouragement of all these uh, great uh, Spanish, the Spanish fleet at war with the, the English and uh, it was a defeat for the Spanish and they had to retreat and they had to bring their shipping around safely and they would head up to Scottish waters because Scotland was an ally of Spain at that time. Remember, it was an independent country going back then. Uh, it wasn't unified, and uh, we had King James, the son of Mary, Queen of Scots, who was on the throne at that time, and Elizabeth I was on the throne of England. So there were still separate, even monarchies, going back to this time. So it does commemorate that. Um, of a great storm and these uh, Spanish vessels suffered and uh, came to grief in this great storm in the 4th of 4th and you can see that on the plaque uh, it is also 
got a connection with um, a war memorial commemorating the fallen of the Second World War II. But uh, up at the top, you can see the sailing ship all geared up there. And below that, you've got a sextant, you've got an anchor, and you've got uh, two globes of the world in their frames there also. So uh, this doubles as a kind of um, war memorial too. Just a question, is, is New Haven still a working harbour? New Haven still is a working harbour. Uh, it is not as big as it used to be. Uh, the main fish market, there is a fish market here today, which does supply fish, and it's actually transported out to fish shops and retailers, and it is there, and it's also a retailer as well, but the fish for it doesn't really come f locally. Uh, although there is a small fishing industry here, the bulk of the fish would come from other uh, fishing ports such as Peterhead up in the northeast of Scotland. So uh, this is uh, commemorating uh, the fallen from New Haven Village and uh, you can see it's still uh, commemorated today with little uh, stones, which are becoming more common, little commemorative stones, painted stones. Um, we have got a little nice view again along the main street there with the spire of uh, St Andrew's Church or Aileen Rock, if you like, in the distance there, with more of these houses with the four stairs, as we call them, uh, which are very common to 17th century what would have been 17th century houses there but have been uh, replaced by these ones we were talking about from the 1960s uh, which the pantiles were uh, to do with uh, the weight in terms of you were exporting goods out of Scotland on ships and uh, to stabilise your ship and I've forgotten what you call that, uh, maybe Joe can help, ballast, that's it, to stabilise your ship coming back yeah, so this of course is named after that uh, famous ship we were talking about, the great uh, flagship of the great Michael, uh, built by uh, James IV. Yeah. So, I'm going to bid you farewell. Thank you very much for joining.